Andrew Wyeth, N.C. Wyeth, and Howard Pyle, legendary American artists who captured the essence of Pennsylvania's Brandywine region in their art. My guest today, Professor W. Barksdale Maynard, has written a very interesting new book on these artists and the landscapes they lived in and painted, and we will learn more about the artists of Wyeth country today on Press Conference. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, the principal of Jim DiLorenzo Public Relations. You can find me online at jimdilorenzo.com. I have found that my career in public relations is my true vocation, telling the stories of my clients and colleagues in a compelling way to drive sales, drive membership, and build awareness. If you have ever had any questions about the role public relations can play in your business or in your career, I would be happy to share my thoughts with you and my experience with you. Please feel free to contact me directly, either by email at jim at jhdenterprises.com or by cell phone or text message at 215-266-5943. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. My guest today is a prolific author. W. Barksdale Maynard has written eight history books since 2002, several of them award-winning. His newest is an unauthorized biography of the artist Andrew Wyeth at Chad's Ford on the Brandywine. Artists of Wyeth Country, Howard Pyle, N.C. Wyeth, and Andrew Wyeth, tells how Andrew Wyeth become, became one of the most popular painters our country has ever known, with many new insights based on a series of interviews with people who knew the famous artist who died in 2009. Artists of Wyeth Country is also the first ever guidebook to the places that Andrew Wyeth painted, offering six in-depth in walking and driving tours. Published by Temple University Press, Artists of Wyeth Country has already attracted attention and some controversy for its new take on the enigmatic Andrew Wyeth. I'm very pleased to welcome Professor Maynard to the show today. Uh, I've been long fascinated in my life, as I've described to you in our earlier conversation, Barksdale, that um, Andrew Wyeth, N.C. Wyeth, and Howard Pyle uh, really shaped my young point of view regarding art. I wanted to draw illustrations, uh, create illustrations like N.C. Uh, excuse me, like Howard Pyle. My parents took me to the Brandywine River Museum when it first opened, and I've probably made hundreds of visits to the museum and the area. Uh, I'm drawn to it and. I've mentioned that to you as well in our conversation, but the book, which I read last week, is fascinating to me, and you really, really capture um, a lot of the essence of the region, and I wanted to ask you to start with, what inspired you to write this book at this time? Well, thank you, Jim. Um, I was really not satisfied with previous biographies of Andrew Wyeth. I knew he was important. I knew we needed to understand him. He's one of the major American artists of the 20th century. And yet previous books, it seemed to me, they often overpraised him or underpraised him. Um, all of them, or you know, many of them were authorized biographies, so you had a kind of official version. And I thought, well, how about an outside person coming in and reporting on what he discovers? about Andrew Wyeth, and in particular, someone who's interested in the whole history of art, because that's not always been the case. Uh, some people have written about Andrew Wyeth, I think, with a very limited knowledge of the history of art in the past. And to understand Andrew Wyeth, you've got to put him in the context of art history. I think that's crucial. I think in our conversation the other day, uh, Barksdale, so we discussed how he was a popular artist, the people loved his work, uh, the people responded to his work, but the art community and the critical uh, art community uh, really overlooked him or, or looked down on him. And I wonder if that, that criticism and that um, not considering him highly as the people in, the, in this country and around the world did, uh, if that played a part in his later career or if that was uh, also a part of why there were so many things that were not correctly written about Wyeth? 
Yeah, I think part of the Wyeth phenomenon is that he was stung by the critics. He was really abused by art critics, and he responded to that by withdrawing into his own private world in Chad's Ford. Uh, he becomes an almost hermit-like figure. Um, his wife and others created great barriers so that access was, was limited to Andrew Wyeth. And he uh, had a favored authorized biographer, and he told the authorized biographer everything. Um, in a way, that's great for the biographer, but in a way that can really slant the story towards what the artist wants you to believe. And so I think that uh, in many ways, Andrew Wyeth has sort of woven his own narrative that's been carried on uh, uh, throughout the years. But I think the story is a good deal more complicated than that would suggest. And that's also interesting to me because I've read that authorized biography and I've read other books about him. But one of the things that comes out in your book, which I was fascinated by, is it really undercuts the image of Wyeth as a depressed, almost loner person. And you really come, come back with the how happy he was and how he interacted with the people in the Chad's Ford and Brandywine area. And he was happy in his life and he was happy with his work and he was happy with the people he encountered every single day. I think that's, that's certainly what I found. Um, it's, it's been said again and again that the death of his father, the great artist N. C. Wyeth, the death of his father in an automobile accident was this tragic event that shaped Andrew Wyatt's outlook on the world. I just don't see the evidence for that. It was a shocking tragedy, yes, but Andrew Wyeth was, was an adult when that happened. And his style became very somber, that's true, but it had already become somber before his father died. So I think that's just one of many, many myths about Andrew Wyeth that I think we need to reconsider. And the other thing that I think is interesting is the way you draw the distinction of Howard Pyle uh, sets up a school in, in, in uh, Philadelphia and then in Wilmington, and he uses Chad's Ford as a summer camp, if you will, for the artists that are his students. And one of those artists was N.C. Wyeth, who became another great illustrator and painter and American artist. And then when N.C. Wyeth has children, Andy, Andrew Wyeth comes into his own and starts studying the same, in the same places, the same locations, the same subjects that Pyle showed his father how to do, and then the father shows the son how to do. And then that has continued with Jamie Wyeth, to an extent, uh, Andrew's son. But what was it that, and you found this in your, in your writing, what was it that drew basically four generations of American artists uh, to that region and to that subject matter? What I've tried to do in my writing about this topic is to show that the Wyeths were not the first artists to come to Chad's Ford, by no means, way back in the 19th century. Really, as soon as the railroad made it easy to go from Philadelphia to Chad's Ford on the weekend, that's back in the 1850s, you had artists flocking to Chad's Ford. Chad's Ford becomes, for Philadelphia artists, an, an escape back into nature, uh, an, an escape from one of the biggest cities in the world, as Philadelphia was, um, and it becomes a place to immerse yourself in the colonial past. The, the history of the colonial era in Chad's Ford, the Battle of the Brandywine, which was the largest land battle of the Revolutionary War, fought right there in Chad's Ford. These drew artists long before Howard Pyle or the Wyatts. So there's a long tradition in art. We need to understand that if we're going to understand how did Howard Pyle choose to, to put his summer art school in, in Chad's Ford, how did N.C. Wyeth decide to live there, um, and then the profound impact, especially that the Battle of the Brandywine had on Andrew Wyeth, that continues throughout his life. It's fascinating to me, in, in reading the book, and I mentioned this to you a few minutes ago, I had never really considered the impact of the uh, Battle of the Brandywine, and I really, after reading the book, I want to go back down there again and take, 
take, pay more attention to the battlefield and the sites around the battlefield. But one of the things that your book also does is it takes you to these places where Wyeth, the Wyeths, uh, Pyle, all the other artists, they wandered about and they sought locations that made them feel, I want to capture this in this canvas or I want to capture this in this illustration. And you, the book is really excellent at bring, bringing you to their point of view, both through the walking and, and, and wanderings through the woods, and then what that, uh, what that scene was like for them. And I think to another extent, you're showing what we may have lost in, the in, 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 in industrialization and building up of, of, of the region, that these vistas aren't necessarily still available to us. But, uh, and I want to ask that, that a little bit more about the, the maps and the, and the guides, but if I could uh, ask my, um, my um, associate to put up the, the air overhead map or the aerial map, or aerial photo, I should say, of the Brandywine region that you shared with us, Barksdale. Um, it's really interesting to see the landscape, how, uh, how the, the setting, uh, has changed in some respects, but it's still there. And the book has many, many um, aerial photos and uh, photographs that have never been seen before. This is what we're seeing right now is an aerial view of the, of the uh, Brandywine region uh, with the uh, locations as numbers. Um, how this did you, you say, Jim, this has never been done before. There's never been a book that's got these sorts of aerial photos and these show exactly what Andrew Wyeth would have seen um, as a young man painting in the Brandywine Valley. And that was really important to me. I wanted to understand his art. The only way to understand his art, I think, is to know what was he actually seeing. Where was he standing? What was he seeing? And it's really quite surprising when you go and stand there, you discover all kinds of things about how he painted, why he painted the way he did. Uh, it's pretty exciting. And what this book allows is for you to literally go there. You can take this book in the car with you, go down to Chad's Ford, walk around, drive around, and you'll see exactly the places that Andrew Wyeth knew and loved. That's fascinating to me because there really are not many places. I remember many, many years ago picking up a book, The Lost World of the Impressionists, and it describes some of the places that uh, Renoir and, and, and Monet and Manet had painted fr uh, the locations and it almost decried the fact that those locations are no longer really there because of the, of the, of the way times have changed. But in your book, you, you show how the landscape has evolved, but the, the, the underpinning of the landscape, these sites that uh, N.C. Wyeth and Andrew Wyeth and other Brandywine School painters have captured over the years, there's still an essence of them, and you can see that through the aerial photographs in the book and also through the, the tours that you uh, describe in your book. I think that's one of the most fascinating things to me is that uh, it combines this critical biography of Andrew Wyeth with these uh, tours that you can take so you can have a better understanding of those landscapes. Yes, I think the idea is if, if he is one of our greatest landscape painters, then we ought to understand the landscapes that he was actually looking at. And um, it was extraordinary to me that no one had really done this, make these maps and, and go out and try to establish exactly where he painted his pictures, and then ask the question, does he paint what he actually sees, or does he alter reality for artistic purposes? And I think that's a fundamental question you have to ask about any artist. Does the artist paint what he sees, or does the artist modify reality for artistic purposes? And what you'll discover reading the book and taking the tours is that Andrew Wyeth painted what he saw to an extraordinary degree. I think he is he's incredibly faithful to the reality of what he saw in the landscape in Chad's Ford. Well, I want to talk to you some more about that landscape and the region. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, uh, Barksdale, but we will be right back with more questions and the discussion with W. Barksdale Maynard and his book, Artists of Wyeth Country. 
my gifts are from the real real because I always feel very confident in what I get. I know it's been authenticated. The thrill of the hunt, they have things I never thought I'd see again. I'm gonna relish the gifts and the smiles. Top designers, up to 90% off retail. All I want for Christmas is Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Prada, Rolex, Cartier. Real stuff at a really good price. Unwrap the unexpected with the real real. Shop over 10,000 new arrivals daily. Get 20% off at the real real. Terms apply. More than 200,000 people in the U.S. who have died from COVID-19. Hundreds more die every day. Still an alarming rate of loss. Masks matter. These masks, they matter. It matters. It saves lives. It prevents the spread of the disease. sure you're up to host? Yeah. We want to keep it the, the way it always was, right? <laughs> That's your grandma. She was the best at the holidays. Welcome back to Press Conference on RVN TV. I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, and I'm speaking with the author of Artists of Wyeth Country, W. Barksdale Maynard, and we've been talking about the artists and the artworks and the, uh, the landscapes of the Brandywine River Valley and the uh, Brandywine School of Artists, and we've been paying particularly close attention to Andrew Wyeth, but I wanted to take this time Maynard to talk about the ecological and uh, environmental aspects of the Brandywine Valley. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware of this, uh, we recently experienced uh, in September of 2021, there was massive flooding in that region. There was massive flooding in Philadelphia and the region, but a four foot wall of water came down uh, through the Brandywine Valley and basically decimated a lot of businesses, homes, and the Brandywine River Museum, which is home to so much of uh, Wyeth art, uh, uh, and the family art, and some Howard Pyle art as well. And in your book, you touch a little bit on the ecology and the environmental awareness and the needs to, to really preserve this land. Uh, what have you been seeing and what did you discover in writing this book that kind of uh, reinforces your vision of um, preserving this area that is so worthy of preservation. It, it, I think as you walk around Chad's Ford, as you study these landscapes, and, and you look at the paintings of Andrew Wyeth, and you look at what's there today, you're, you're struck by the ecological change. It's quite extraordinary. Chad's Ford is not today what it was 50 or 100 years ago, that's for sure. The first thing you notice as you walk around and look, look at these paintings and then look at reality, the forests have grown up. Agriculture is gone, and so you've got a return to a, a wooded condition. So it's often difficult, frankly, to find exactly where the artist was standing because now you're in, you're in the woods, whereas the artist was in a field. So agriculture is gone, and also we've got suburbanization, which mm -hmm. has come pouring in. And so many of these landscapes, you're now in someone's backyard. Hmm. And in fact, Andrew Wyeth himself complained about this. Andrew Wyeth's painting method was to walk all day. He would just walk the hills of Chad's Fort. He would wander anywhere and everywhere. But as it got into the 1950s, he'd be out walking, and then there'd be a no trespassing sign or there'd be a fence, and there'd be a backyard. And so it, 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 hemmed, it hemmed in Andrew Wyeth, this, uh, this suburbanization, which of course continues. So I think those two things happening at once, more and more houses, more and more forests, makes a chance for that increasingly looks very, very different from what we think of when we think of a Wyeth country landscape. 
That's interesting, and you, I, 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 I see that as far as, as the farmland. I think that's a very interesting point because the farmland was crucial to Andrew Wyeth's paintings, especially the Kerner Farm and, and uh, other paintings of that era. But the other thing is, as you mentioned, the forests are growing again, and that was kind of like the, f the, the inspiration for Pyle's illustrations of Robin Hood and King Arthur, and for Wyeth's uh, drawings of, or paintings of, Andrew, excuse me, N.C. Wyeth's paintings of uh, King Arthur and, and Robin Hood and other uh, Last of the Mohicans. He used those woods to inspire him to paint those uh, scenes for the books that he uh, illustrated. But what do you think is the most pressing issue for the uh, Brandywine Valley uh, as far as going forward? We, we've had this flooding, we've had the uh, a lot of flooding over the years, but this past fall was very, very damaging. What do you think people can do to f help preserve that region without any further damage to the to the environment well you mentioned that flood and this flood was absolutely extraordinary um, they've been measuring the height of the brandywine creek every day at chad's ford since about 1915 they've been continuously so we have a long record of measurements of the stream height and that flood that struck just a few months ago it was four feet higher than any flood ever recorded in history. Think about that, wow. four feet higher than the all-time maximum. And if you look at the statistics of the 20 biggest floods ever, about 15 of them have happened since the mid-1990s. So what does that tell you? <laughs> it tells you that something is really seriously wrong with the Brandywine, and I think it's got to be one thing too much water running off of parking lots and suburban streets. I think it's overdevelopment that's causing this flooding crisis. And it is a real crisis. A lot of people in Chad's Ford were really wiped out by the rampaging floodwaters. So I would think development is a big, big issue and development contributing to this flood problem. Because if we're going to have these mega floods, who's going to be able to live or work along the banks of the Brandywine, as people have done for 300 years. That's amazing when you think about it. And I, I, I agree. I, I, I've seen the, the, uh, the buildup of uh, houses and uh, residential communities and over time. I mean, I used to, as I mentioned this to you the other day, when I was a student at Villanova University, whenever I had free time and I had access to a car, I would drive down to the Brandywine and, and drive around and tour and stop at the book barn and go into the brand new river museum and that was 40 some years ago when i was doing that maybe even more now i think think about it and uh, there have been so many changes there and it is sad to see but at the same time you under you, you, as you mentioned when when the railroads first got there and brought philadelphians out into the country and the artists came out and it was their refuge now it's become a refuge for people who are living, working in the city to get there, people who are li working in Wilmington, people who are working in Philadelphia, even in some cases people who are living in, in, in uh, North Jersey or, or working in North Jersey or in New York are coming down to the Brandywine to take advantage of that mystique and that, and that country flavor, but at the same time they're kind of desecrating that area. And that's yeah. really sad to see. One of the things that I thought was interesting, and I want to circle back to something uh, bef before, we, before we wrap up today, but there was a moment in uh, your, your first chapter, I believe it was, or it might have been in your introduction, where you're, I believe it's you standing in front of a, uh, a N.C. Wyeth painting of a pirate marooned on a beach. And the pirate is on this yellow sand, and he's wearing a red sash, and he's got his head down. And for the first time ever, I've never heard this theory before, but you expressed the theory that so many years later, Andrew Wyeth paints Christina's World, which is one of the world's most popular paintings, with a fascinating backstory. But he positions 
Christina in the, pe the painting with a pink sash and she's staring in the distance and on a yellow field, which is almost a, uh, an answer to the uh, marooned painting, which I think is fascinating. And both of those landscapes were in the farm fields of the Brandywine Valley, which is something we may not be able to see anymore. In, in your book, you, you have several tours that you suggest. There are six tours that you can do by car or by walking. And you caution us not to use bicycles because of the way the roads are as far as the traffic goes. And I, I'm, I am familiar with that. But what was your favorite tour that you recommended in the book? Um, what was one of the tours that you said this would be something that real people would really get the, f the flavor quickly? I do like the tour along the Brandywine where you take the boardwalk through the, through the marsh. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been to see if the boardwalk survived the flood. I don't know. But um, it, was a great, it was a great experience to take the boardwalk through the marsh because that is the so-called morass of the British attack on Chad's Ford in 1777 where the British soldiers got stuck in the morass. So you can see this very exciting place. And boy, that's the heart of Wyeth country. N.C. Wyeth painted there as an art student of Howard Piles, and then Andrew Wyeth painted there. Um, it is a, it's an exciting place, I think, that, that big marsh, a big swamp uh, at the heart of Chad's Ford. Well, I, I, as I've said to you in our conversations, I'm fascinated by your book. I read it cover to cover as soon as I got it. And I'm going to be rereading it, and I'm going to be looking at it very closely. I encourage everyone who's watching today and has any interest in American art, uh, has any knowledge of or interest in a Andrew Wyeth and his uh, forefathers in, in N.C. Wyeth and uh, Howard Pyle, to take a look at Artists of Wyeth Country by uh, W. Barksdale Maynard. I think you will get a big kick out of this book. You will learn a lot. And uh, it's available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and other booksellers. Um, Professor, I really appreciate how much time you've given me over the last couple of days to discuss this. And I look forward to further conversations with you. And I wish you much success with the book. And uh, I hope uh, we contribute something to, to the sales of that book today. Thank you so much, Jim. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you. Same here. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching today. Uh, again, this is a subject that fascinates me, has fascinated me all my life, and I was glad to be able to bring this to you. I, I want to thank uh, W. Uh, Barksdale Maynard for being my guest, and I want to remind all our viewers that I always look forward to hearing from you. So please feel free to give me a, a call at 215-266-5943 or email me at jim at JHD Enterprises with any questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you all again very, very soon.